This video, we're going to see if buying a mining card is actually a good investment for a Blender GPU. I got this idea from reading my comments, and this guy, Beth Bichy, Bachi, Bachi Naive123, had this idea about mining GPUs and motherboards. So that got me thinking, hey, I wonder if I could. So I went on eBay found what I saw was kind of like a weird passively cooled mining GPU and then bought it. And now two weeks later shows up at my house and we're going to look at it. This is the card I got from eBay. It's um, supposedly a 1060 that was designed for mining. You can see that it has no uh, HDMI ports on it. This was made during the mining craze and basically it was an attempt to sell a card specifically to miners. It's a little different than a 1060, so the memory on it is slightly lower quality, and it's obviously designed to be run at lower speeds. Um, so they didn't include any fans or anything like that. Yeah, kind of an interesting card. You can get them really cheap now because the increased difficulty of mining has made these no longer cost efficient. So they can be kind of a good deal to pick up. Okay, the two other cards I chose for this is the 1660 and a Gigabyte RX 550. I chose the RX 550 as a comparison because it's in roughly the same price bracket as my eBay 1060. We also have the 1660 by MSI. Um, I think this is a good comparison because it's just kind of representing like, hey, I'm just going to go out and buy a new card, save up my money, and buy a general purpose graphic card, as opposed to buying like a card specifically designed for rendering. Also, I happen to own this card, so I figured it would be good to just kind of test it and use it and see, find out what, where it sits. What you're going to get is kind of a ridiculous looking build here. This Gigabyte graphics card, and I'm going to put it in there and use it to work as my display driver while I use Blender to render on a second graphics card. Oh, I'm also curious how far you can take this. Could I have like 20 graphics cards in here and render on all of them? I don't know. I wish I was a Blender expert, but yeah, let's just try rendering. Let's just try this real quick. I forgot to plug in the SATA power for this. That's why I'm getting no hard drive error. Okay, so one of the things that's becoming obvious is the fact that um, this card gets heat soaked super quickly. So even after just one BMW render, the card's already uh, up against the ADC heat limit. So it's throttling even after a single render. So this is BMW. BMW is kind of short. So I think we're going to need to add like a fan or something onto this card specifically to make it run better. Okay, so if you want the dumbest way, you could use some of this and just buddy all right so i added a fan back in it's just um hanging kind of on there we'll see if this actually does anything or not so yeah you can see the fan just kind of hanging on there i almost almost knocked it off uh let's see so initial results seem pretty positive everything's back down to 36 c so yeah let's find out what happens after we run a couple renders all right, so let's go take a look and see what Hardware Infos had to say about like the temperature settings and if we were thermal throttling through this whole thing. So let's just go over here, take a look at my fancy 3D wall. So here you can see I ran the 106 in two configurations, one with the fan and one without the fan. The one without the fan hit 94C fairly quickly and started throttling, while the other one stayed at 46C pretty consistently. Um, this didn't actually affect render times on short renders very much, but on long ones you really do see a big difference. 
the 1060 beats everything with a time of six minutes and 15 seconds. The 106 delivers considerable, you know, time savings over the 550 with a time of 1818 over 24 minutes and 56 seconds. So considering that they're both roughly the same price, the 106 does deliver considerable value. Now if the benchmark's done, it's time to draw a conclusion. Initially, my thought was for $50, the P106 is actually a pretty great option if you can get away with just rendering on your graphics cards. And then the 1660 Super was actually a good option if you wanted to save up some money and have a more general purpose kind of card. But all of that's been kind of thrown out the window. Over the holiday season, graphics cards became an incredibly short supply and the price of Bitcoin bumped up to incredible highs. Now, this created problems in that it inflated the price of all these graphics cards that I showed. So, basically at this point, it's hard to recommend buying any of these. In fact, I'm probably going to go sell my mining card and make a little bit of profit off of it. Instead of buying any of these graphics cards, I'd recommend one of two options. Either A, use a cloud rendering service. Um, I've never personally done this, but I've heard good things about it or B, use one of the streaming gaming services. Um, I've done this with Shadow Tech myself, and I've done that to mixed results, where sometimes I would face latency on there that was just so bad that it made even working in Blender kind of difficult. It's better to use, spend the $12 a month paying for Shadow and wait for graphics cards prices to come down in the next three to four months, than spend an extra 100 or 200 dollars on buying a graphics card that doesn't deliver the amount of performance that you're paying for so if you liked the video hit like if you loved the video hit subscribe if you hated the video tell me about it in the comments and hit that dislike button boy <laughs>